So this talk is not really uh, diving deep into any uh, kind of approach or, or technical direction. Um, it's just a summary of general thoughts that I've been having where, while you know, uh, doing all this, uh, having these discussions with a group of people um, that have talked so far, basically, with uh, Florian earlier, Elizabeth, Guillaume, uh, and others um, uh, in here. So, um, okay, the motivation is pretty clear. Uh, privacy, I believe, is one of the reasons why people come to Web3, uh, but only to find out that things are not too much better. Uh, they are a little bit better uh, right now because um, thing like applications are not, um, you know, developed as much in order to, you know, gather users' data and monetize out of that. Uh, but if we leave the ship like going, perhaps that's the, there. There are going to be applications that even in the Web three space start doing uh, the same thing, um, which is something we should not get into. Uh, others have uh, dived deeper into that. What I wanted to do is actually uh, highlight the fact that there are lots of dimensions into what we want to do. Uh, and the place is vast. Like we know peer-to-peer -peer networks, they have been a big thing like 10, 15 years ago, 20 maybe. Um, and there have been uh, um, papers and you know, uh, techniques for privacy as well. So it's not a brand new space. Uh, and, there, and there has been a lot of work put into it. The important thing here is, and at least for me, it was that I was kind of getting lost into all the different uh, directions that we wanted to investigate, things that we wanted to brainstorm on and so on. So I think a very good exercise is as we go on, try to identify the different dimensions that we have. Um, because we have different actors like the uh, publisher privacy and client privacy. Um, reader writer privacy as we as we call it then we have all these different content routing systems in the uh, ipfs uh, stack so uh, it was a whole session yesterday but the dhd is very different to bitswap um, bitswap is very different to uh, the indexer nodes and so on um, then you have other versions like uh, JS versions of JS IPFS and lib 2 p So all these need to be taken into account. Um, and you know, basically when we design or when we look into some privacy preserving kind of technique or protocol enhancement, we need to place it there and have a map so that um, you know, if you try to improve privacy on the DHT, but you don't do on BitSwap, as uh, Marco just mentioned, then uh, you're back to square one, basically. Uh, so we need to be very clear about where, uh, where we want to go. Uh, then you have different layers, right? So you might be anonymous on the overlay, but what happens if you leak information about your multi-address um, at the network layer and someone wants to uh, go after that and, you know, uh, although your peer ID is rotating or doing whatever and you stay anonymous there, if you go underneath and you have your IP address uh, exposed all of the time, then you didn't achieve much, basically. Someone can find out everything about you. Um, then th there are different dimensions, which actually, um, this is uh, kind of what I'm going to talk about today. Um, different dimensions even um, for all categories of techniques that we can look into. And I would like to, to focus for five minutes on those. So um, you have content-based um, uh, approaches and improvements. So one of them is what Guillaume just mentioned. You can uh, ask for the double hash of a CAD, or you can ask for a part of the CAD, uh, and so on. Uh, the private set intersection that we heard about earlier today is, again, part of that. It doesn't touch too much the, the routing um, the, the routing subsystem, so as to speak. Uh, obfuscating with more traffic and mixed nets and so on probably also fall into this, uh, this category. Then you have routing based. Uh, we heard about onion routing. Um, we um, investigated in the past BitSwap and having uh, kind of TTL for BitSwap. So right now BitSwap is asking the first kind of immediately connected neighbors, what if uh, that could go two hops or three hops further away. Uh, whether that would be useful performance-wise is a different discussion, but you could say that, you know, the first order, your, your first hop neighbor, yes, they are going to listen to what you're asking for, but then from then on, um, they won't know. 
uh, and perhaps if there, there is some randomization there, even the first hop will not know if you're the one asking or if you're the one relaying someone else's uh, request. So again, you cannot guarantee 100% privacy, but um, it makes things a little bit more difficult to, um, uh, to figure out. Um, then you have, okay, content addressing, there are different approaches. Yeah, no, before, iterative versus recursive. So the APFS DHT is using recursive um, um, lookup. Uh, iterative has been discussed in the past, but it was rejected because of uh, reflection attacks and several other um, uh, kind of downsides. But it could be something that people could uh, have a second thought uh, into and uh, reconsider, you know, things have changed. Maybe, um, maybe the, um, the, uh, the attack surface that was there then um, is not there anymore. Or if, um, you know, there are some easy mitigation strategies is something to investigate because, you know, the iterative lookup is clearly better in terms of, uh, in terms of privacy. Uh, then we have content addressing, and yes, it's, uh, there has been a big line of work in um, the academic sphere about content uh, addressed networks and content centric networks. And there is actually, I have a pile of um, papers that are, like talk about that, and it would be interesting to um, workshop around them and like read through what this is saying. There, there are pros and cons there. Uh, if you have content addressing, you have something or content name or address or a hash or a CAD, whatever it is, we have to understand that this is out in the clear. If you have it, if, you, if you're asking something by name, everyone in the network, unless you encrypt the CAD itself in a way, everyone knows what you're after. Uh, and that's even the case for um, approaches that try to put that at the network layer directly. So not as an overlay, the routers would understand and be able to route based on network names. But then the routers themselves know, now know what they're doing. Right now, the internet, because it's blind and location-based, uh, they, they just forward to an IP address. So unless the router has a uh, deep packet inspection, it doesn't know what it's doing. It's just blindly forwarding uh, data here and there. Uh, with content addressing, even not on the overlay in the kind of network layer, um, things are much more in the open. So that is something that has to be taken into account and perhaps be uh, kind of complemented with a content-based approach where you know um, th there is some obfuscation there or something like that so that the CID or the name or whatever the content addressing scheme uh, is like is, uh, is more hidden and not so much uh, in the open. Um, then there are ephemeral, like, well, ephemeral could be in parentheses, but ID-based approaches. So, um, yeah, it has been discussed even um, with part of this group a few months ago that, you know, nodes could rotate their peer ID uh, every so often, say every 24 hours or every 48 hours or whatever. So you kind of have snapshots of the DHT, um, but nodes rotate their peer ID so they, you cannot really find them um, after a while, you know, with the same peer ID. Of course, the, the next question is what happens with the multi-address. So if you're in the same IP address and you change your peer ID, then probably people can locate you. Okay, there, you know, IP addresses change as well because nodes move and so on, uh, but someone could link. Um, now, if we kind of uh, put that together with nodes kind of uh, blending their CAD with some randomness, like encrypting or like obfuscating somehow the CAD, then you can, you could potentially um, arrive in uh, a situation where when you want to go back to yesterday or last month or last year and see what this peer particularly asked for, you don't ha you have broken the linkability between both the peer ID and the content address, the, the CAD or the content um, that the peers asked for. So in that case, you know, it's ex ex it becomes basically exponentially more difficult to try and um, get a snapshot of the network back then where you have either the CAD or you can link between different peer IDs uh, and you uh, end up like figuring out um, what a peer did. Um, yeah, so I, I think that pretty much 
uh, concludes what I wanted to uh, bring to the table. Uh, some facts, uh, we, we, we need to think a clearly defined threat model because you know, all of the uh, different approach, all of the different dimensions that are brought here, uh, each one of them could have a different threat model. Uh, and we need to know what we're attacking, what, what we're trying to solve here. Uh, it's definitely, I would say, impossible to um, you know, find a one-size-fits-all solution. Um, so, uh, yeah, once right up today in the, the HackMD document seemed like a good start there. Uh, but, but still, it's a long list, so we need to have a threat model for each one of them, perhaps uh, also a different solution to each one of them. Um, Performance will always get hit, we know that, uh, but it, it's always, I think, uh, good to remind ourselves and our users. Um, yeah, uh, and that's it, basically. Um, I think we need to do an exercise of putting all these in some kind of spectrum, uh, these different dimensions, and then place the solutions according to where they are, uh, just so that we know which part we are, uh, we're targeting. Yeah. That's it. What, what does the like, DRAM blinking look like? like I don't know, that's, that's a very brainstorming thing. Um, we were having a discussion in some Discord channel the other day about um, being able to uh, have it as a feature where in order to create your peer ID, you get randomness from DRAND or some other uh, randomness generator. Uh, DRAND is good because you can verify whether someone did it or not. Uh, and then, not for privacy reasons, it was for a different reason. Uh, but if you want to obfuscate perhaps, you know, what your CID looks like, you can get, I don't know, uh, DRAND randomness value and um, hash it together, but knowing which around which epoch of during this happened. So you can go back actually and kind of, it's, it's, not, uh, it's like an encoding step uh, perhaps, um, which yeah, it, everyone would have access in the future, uh, but um, yeah, perhaps it would make it more difficult to, you know, it would break, break linkability at some point. It's it's very undefined right now. It's uh, yeah, I don't know uh, something to to food for thought. <laughs> Can you explain the the iterative THC lookup thing? So so what was the reflection impact that is pretty? Yeah, so this is a big, uh, well, th there are some GitHub issues and uh, I'm not really even an expert. I can remember exactly the details, but the, the base thing is that instead of like asking someone and getting back the, uh, the response mm -hmm. and then asking again, basically you delegate, you ask your first hop node and then they ask for you, right? So in that sense, you can do many requests and you overload that node when you are not going to get affected. Right now, if you do a million requests per second, you're going to receive back traffic. So your own node is going to get overloaded anyway, uh, so, which is not in your best interest, obviously, because you're going to be shot back. Uh, but if not, then you can just send out requests. You're over overloading other nodes and you basically don't care because uh, you might at some point receive uh, the responses only, but you know, nodes might be dead by then. But certainly because on, only the first node you're asking knows like who you are, then the rest is kind of hidden. Uh, so in that, in that sense, you know, uh, it improves privacy in a sense. Um, but of course, again, it depends what the way back looks like. If the way back um, looks like, you know, your multi-address or PID is carried over and the final source of content is just connecting to you and sending you content, then you haven't achieved anything. Uh, the trick would be to send the content all the way back through those nodes uh, so that every intermediate step don't know what they're doing, they're just forwarding content, and only the last one, which has been your first, knows who you are and what you have asked for. <laughs>